G'day folks, oh, welcome to another Thursday update at the shop. Didn't get an awful lot done here yes, last weekend because I went to Brad's place just for the hell of it. Um, didn't get a lot of video up there and a lot of it turned out looking like the Blair Witch Project with equipment because, well, when your friends give you a bottle of Jack Daniels and you don't have to drive around for a few days, why not? <laughs> that was great fun though. But yeah, we did destroy the rest of the Corolla and make a horrible mess, but it's all good fun. Now I'm back here and I'm going to try and clean up, which is what I was going to do last weekend. And thankfully we've got good weather too. I've still got to tackle the um, outboard. I'll probably try and do that tomorrow night. Um, yeah, not a lot else going on. Gurney runs. I've had that running with a restrictor on it. And last night I put a pressure gauge and everything on line with the discharge line. Here's the highest rated brass fitting I could find and everything should be right. I think the pump is pretty tired, it's not building full pressure, but I'd like to see at least 2,000 come out of it. But yeah, not an awful lot else happening, I'm going to clean up outside, I'll do a tip trip to get rid of some old plastics and cathode ray tubes and things. I'll keep a few to smash, but there's just too many old TVs floating around now, everywhere. I mean, you can buy an 80 centimetre high definition LCD television for 250 bucks now from Aldi's. Uh, it's obviously made shit if it's that cheap but if it lasts you a year why not I mean a good bottle of scotch costs seventy dollars now so what's 250 for a TV that lasts you a year hell you probably get more entertainment out of it and I found this disturbingly large capacitor well it's not huge compared with say what photonic induction has been playing with lately but it's big enough to make me wary of charging it it's a Sprague Chlorinol capacitor Hence the chlory in the name. It is obviously filled with um, polychlorinated biphenyl, or PCB. Um, it's a paper film capacitor, like paper and aluminum. 24,500 volts DC. That's a lot of juice. Doesn't say microfarad rating. Uh, there's a part there. P158308. Made in USA. It looks like 126D. And 7429 underneath it roughly marked onto it. It's not erasing if I polish over it, so... I just want to polish this up. All the paint's oxidised and the main thing to check with these is that they're not leaking. And I've gone over every inch of the seams and the seals and everything is fine. There's another dozen or so small brick capacitors in the same bin. Well, they actually came in with a load of batteries even though they're not classed as a battery. Um, they came in with a load of batteries and things, particularly telephone exchange batteries and stuff like that. And um, the other ones are leaking around the terminals in quite a few cases, and they're only rated to 600 volts DC, 24 microfarads, so they're a pretty piss weak cap anyway. So I just sort of educated the scrap guys on what they are and what's inside them. And they're going to put some gloves on and carefully place them inside a sealed plastic container for disposal. I'll dig up my contacts book and see if the um, hazmat company I usually use will take them. I'll go down there and pick them up. Um, they only do minimum lots, but I suppose if you present them with a whole heap of these, they'll take them for free. Well, minimum charge anyway. They usually charge you shipping and then take them off because it's an EPA thing. I'm pretty sure the EPA subsidises them for uh, hazmat disposal. Same with things like mercury vapour lamps. Even bulk quantities of um, LCD panels which have a mercury vapour lamp inside them, they'll take those. Old paints, lead based paint, pesticides, that sort of stuff. It's just a basic hazmat disposal facility. So yeah, we'll play with this one when I learn more about it. Um, most importantly I need to make up a high voltage DC supply. So I need some really big high voltage rectifiers. Even charging it with 2,000 volts would be fine just to get a nice bang out of it. I think that's all Photonic was doing with his. Just 2 kV, that's plenty. But as for microfarad rating, I'd say about 3 or 4 microfarads. Considering a microwave capacitor is only 2 kV, about that big, uh, that's only rated to like half a microfarad to 1.5 in the biggest cases I think I've seen. So comparably yeah, might only be one microfarad, but it's more than enough at that voltage. Like, it would blow your arms off and throw you across the room. It would really do a number on you. That's why I've got the safety wire on it. 
I carefully probed it with a bit of heavily insulated stuff as soon as I found it, but nothing in it, thankfully. And uh, yeah, just wrap some bare copper wire around it for safety. Anywho, that's enough rambling about that capacitor. We'll do a video on it later when I get the courage to charge the damn thing up and put a chicken stick across it. I've got to buy some more white PVC tubing to make a chicken stick. And one day we might even put some power to the um, 6 kilojoule 450 volt DC bank. Because that thing would make a wicked can crusher. Especially with the size of the bus bars that are on it. The thing could put out a lot of amps. Even this. Charge this cap up and stick a can or something inside a magnetic coil and see what it does. Uh, see Photonic Induction's channel. He's had a lot of fun lately with one of these vaporising potatoes and other bits and pieces. Anywho, thanks for watching.